This is Tech Unmuted, the podcast of modern collaboration, where we tell the stories of how collaboration tools enable businesses to be more efficient and connected with your hosts, George Shanestein and Santi Cuellar. Welcome to Tech Unmuted. Welcome to the latest episode of Tech Unmuted. Today, we're going to take a look at Copilot for Windows, uh, which is in preview mode. We're going to talk a little bit about how to use it, some of the things it can do for you. But up front, we, Santi and I were both at Microsoft Ignite a couple of weeks ago. The preview does not work for Sante. Uh, we went through a couple of things to try to fix that, but talk about the conversation you had with one of the engineers from Microsoft. Yeah, so actually I was sitting, we, we happened to be right next to, guess what, Windows Copilot, Microsoft's station for Windows Copilot. And I remember when I first got there early morning, you know, like we always do to kind of set up for this big show. Um, a young lady who was a Microsoft employee was struggling trying to get Copilot to work on Windows. And I'm like, well, that sounds familiar because <laughs> I've been struggling too. Yep. So apparently apparently they had a Windows engineer there who was a really, uh, really good uh, person. I uh, actually connected with him on LinkedIn. And he um, he went and fixed their their issue. And then, and then I, I spoke to myself about, I'm having the same problem. He says, yeah, I, I can fix your issue too. So I asked, what's going on? He says, well, listen, here's what it is. Apparently, there's a registry key as part of Copilot yeah. that says, hey, <clears throat> if you have an external, if you have an external display, so who doesn't have an external display? And I do. Their, right? <laughs> so if you have an external display, Copilot for Windows rearranges your icons and there was people complaining about that so so until they're able to fix it uh, with the i guess one of the upcoming updates or something they had a registry key that suppresses copilot so i'm like oh well wait a minute i don't want my suppress i don't care if my icons are rearranged so he went in and tried to undo that he was not successful so he was kind of embarrassed uh, yeah. He really tried. Uh, he tried for about an hour and a half, and I, I really appreciate him trying. So, <clears throat> for whatever reason, my Copilot in Windows is not working. Eventually, I guess when they push on you update, maybe I'll I'll get caught up. Um, you apparently it had it. It works. Had it, and it disappeared, and, and then, then it, it came back for some reason. Just came back again. Yeah. Santa and I both are on some beta <laughs> preview version of Windows yeah. as well, right? We Which are. I think. When we initially went to that, mine went away. Yeah, and yeah. then it was just randomly a week or two after that. Then it just came back. But by the way, you said something at the beginning of the of this episode. It's in preview mode. This is exactly what preview yep. is. And so in this particular case, it's not working for me. It's working for you. And so I think uh, if you share your screen, I think we do a quick little dive as to how exactly does Copilot in Windows, interact with Windows, and 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 we kind of see. But yeah, keep in mind it is in preview mode. That's the yep. key here. So I'm going to do a full screen share on this. You see in my desktop right now. I'm going to pop open uh, a browser. I will point out this is uh, the Chrome browser. So keep that in mind because something a little different is going to happen later that yep. I think is interesting. Uh, this is Loop. We've talked about this before. If anybody wants us to do more of a deep dive on this, let us know. But this is where we we track uh, the episodes that we do. Yeah. So this pre preview is in the bottom tray, right? So I'm going to click on it. You're going to see it on the right hand side of the screen. And a couple of things about this. This is persistent. So if I pop open another app, and I will come back to this later, this is just a blank PowerPoint stays persistent on the right hand side and I you know say, why you know why george because unlike copilot for bing which lives inside of your browser yep this is copilot for windows it lives where inside of your operating system so i Correct. love that because it is persistent because it's part of your os it's not going anywhere 
All right. I like that. Pretty cool. And I will I will say for the period of time that I it disappeared, I missed it. Uh we're gonna do another episode after this one on uh some research that was done by Microsoft on the broader copilot productivity enhancements people got and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's not like I I saved hours and hours and hours a week just on this piece, but it did absolutely save me time. And you'll see in some of the things we we look at here. But Sante threw together a list of things. So I'm gonna try some of these as are. Okay. Uh as they are in here. So you can because yeah, because the, I, the idea here is that copilot and windows should be able to manipulate your windows. So we got a little bit of a reboot there. Uh, oh, okay. Let's give it another try. So I'm not sure we got an error. Don't know what the error was. So, uh, okay. That's the first time I ever saw an error, but you can see on this, it's giving me instructions on how to do it. It's basically saying it's part of the operating system. Would you like to switch to dark mode? Yes. There dark is. mode. That is very cool. Same thing, I'll cut this back in and say, hey, put me back to light mode. Not a big fan of dark mode, right? It's gonna take a look again. It's in the operating system. Would you like to turn it off? Yes, so we're back. Uh, okay. I'm gonna add something like, hey, I wanna add a Bluetooth keyboard. Drop yeah, that see, in. You see, it's interacting with the operating system itself. It's not just generating a response, it's actually, the buttons that you click are actually there. You go, I and mean, it's bring you to it's bring you to where you can add a device, and it gives you instructions. And it sees my existing devices, right? Obviously, you're in the Bluetooth uh, console, but you see these pieces. There's a lot of other additional instructions over here. Right. So if you're having a challenge finding where you're going, it's going to do it. Uh, we've not That's tested all awesome. these on this, by the way. So we're going to see if all all the prompts work. They should. Uh, just volume, Let's see what it gives. Would you like me to set volume level to 50 for you? I'm gonna say no thanks, but clearly it's gonna do it. Uh, record a video, let's see what this one does. Huh, yeah, so <clears throat> this- So this we're already be, recording, but let's see what it, what it's it gonna make, prompt. It may, it may have a conflict because your camera's being used by teams. So that'd be interesting. So it's gonna ask you to open up the camera app. So I'm gonna, <laughs> so I'm gonna say no on that one, right? right. But clearly but, that's gonna, and these are easy prompts. Like a lot of times you'd have been like, hey, it's camera, I think I'll go to camera. Right. Uh, yeah, volume, maybe it's in my system tray, maybe it's somewhere else, but there's users, on many of these things, the dark mode thing, I have no idea where dark mode is, right? Right. Other so, than being able to ask it, I have no idea. Uh, so I did re, uh, I think I just did record a dictation. Uh, interesting. It's prompted you to do it in Word. See that? Wow. And it's, uh, need to open Word on device. Interesting. Uh, Very interesting. This is not going to work, I think, because we're utilizing the microphone. Correct. So I'm not going to, I'm going to skip on that one. Take a screenshot. Let's see, is this going to take a screenshot or is it going to take me to snip? I suspect. I'm going to suspect probably snip. Because it, I bet because it's going to take the control, whatever screenshot. There it is. But Start you snipping are correct. tool. It, it's snipping. <clears throat> yeah. So that, which makes sense because that way you can choose. Oh, look, it opens it for you. Yep. So very cool. on that one. Okay. Uh, turn off notifications. Let's see. I already have, I'm in presentation mode, so it's not going to allow most notifications. But let's see what it prompts us on this one. Do you want to turn on do not disturb mode? Oh, very nice. And there it is. And then I guess you can turn back on. Wow. That's awesome. So wait, 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 wait. Look, look at your screen. It's it, it, it gives you suggested follow up prompts. So now you have a bubble that says, OK, so how do I turn back on again? Yep. And and so not only is it doing it for you and giving you a, a, a narrative or a, a, or a generated response, but it's giving you follow up suggested tasks that the user may want to use. 
That's and these are cool. things, if you think about it, some of these, I can go in the search box down here and I can probably get to find it right on your back, own. Right. But, but here, but here, okay, yes, you can, but you're navigating, you're navigating towards that. Whereas here, you're asking a question and it's giving you the, the, the answer, yes or no. Do you want to do it? I'll do it for you. You hit yes yep. and it does it for you. So it is a time saver. Because, yes, you could search, go to the section of the operating system that does it, find the right button to to hit, or just ask it. And it'll just give you the, it'll give you a yes or no question, you answer, and it changes it for you. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, I, I do as well. And it's, it guides you much closer to the answer than you would typically get to. Now, it's a couple other features on this and ways you can use it. So, one is it works exactly how Bing works or ChatGPT uh, or similar AI tools. So I can say, uh, create a photo of a dog on a skateboard. So I can do this in Bing, I can do this in ChatGPT. But now I can do this in the sidebar, right? So I could be in a PowerPoint deck. So I you don't lose, a... you don't lose the connection to ChatGPT and Dolly to create generative responses. Correct. Uh, and, the, and the value of this from a working standpoint is I'm also not flipping to a browser and then flipping back to a PowerPoint. Because it's persistent. I mean, it's persistent and I'm able to let it just run on the right hand side and create an image for me. Uh, and there we go with the images. So now here's the other interesting thing. I'm going to click on one of these. I'll click that on is, that one. That is pretty cool. It's probably in that. my settings somewhere, but this this launches Edge. Right. So it opens up it, in Microsoft Edge. You were originally in Chrome, but the 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 image viewing piece is default to Microsoft Edge. I got gotcha. you. So, and this is technically in designer, which is also a new application that's sort of in testing at the moment. I was playing around with it today. Uh, maybe we'll take a look at that on another episode. You can also then go in here and say something like, uh, write a story about a dog on a skateboard and get a gen generated answer. You're gonna get okay. it generated there again. So the, the reason why this is helpful, and I've pre-tested this, you could be in PowerPoint, you could have yeah. a question about PowerPoint, how do I add a video, how do I add a picture or something else. But the persistent nature of this now lets me do something like this, which is grab part of the text that's over here, I'm still responding. Gonna have yeah, to wait a second on that. He's still and generating. Let's see if I can I copy the picture from here and just do a simple paste. I can. So it gives you the ability to not have to leave PowerPoint to potentially be adjusting not, text for a presentation. Yeah, you're not switching windows. You're you're and then you're, also go in like, I like this, this and and just grab the text that's here. I actually did the copy from the keyboard on that, and let's see if I can paste this in here. The answer might be no, so let's do a regular cut over here, see what happens. I think if you stop the responding, maybe. Uh, yeah, you're right. So there we go. There Spot it is. on. Yeah. So it was writing a fairly long story. You could go in here then and take this text down and make it fit and do a bunch of other adjustments, right? So this is not co-pilot for PowerPoint. No. But there's a bit of a hybrid use case here where you get some of the functionality that you will get with co-pilot for PowerPoint and, and Word and everything else. But again, the ability to have it persistent on the right-hand side and, and pretty quickly do things, I mean, that's amazing. So, uh, so can, can you ask it, can you ask it, how do I insert a table in a PowerPoint? I just wanna see if it, interacts in any way with this PowerPoint? I think the answer is no, but let's see. 
because I think that's the difference between Copilot and Microsoft 360. Would you like me to open? Okay, well, well, it's asking to open up a PowerPoint. Which we did before, right, when we played around that it only opens PowerPoint. It doesn't actually do anything. That's do where, anything. And, and that's the difference between, I think, Microsoft 365 Copilot that is actually embedded inside of the applications versus Win, uh, Copilot for Windows, which is embedded in your operating system, right? But the thing to keep in mind on this is, again, it's persistent. So I go to the web and I can search for this. Do so it with Bing, do a regular search, whatever it is, AI driven or not AI driven. I get the answer back. Maybe I'm splitting screen. I'm probably splitting screens equally. So now my PowerPoint's really small on the one side of the screen. This is persistent. Again, I've, I have a widescreen monitor, so this works really well. Uh, okay. I, have, I have a full working window <laughs> here with PowerPoint. I've got this little sidebar window with with Copilot for Windows works really well. This did give me multiple ways to try to figure this out. Gave me a link to a video. It gave me a little bit of text about it. I have used this in Excel to ask it about formulas. It gives me a lot of deep detail back on how to create the formulas. OK, do me a favor. Close the Copilot window. Perfect. And now, can you push on your keyboard the Windows key and the letter C together, like Windows C? Ah, there's your shortcut. Yeah. Okay. All right. So hold on. <clears throat> this is pretty good. So you have Copilot embedded in your operating system that interacts directly with your operating system, so you can change probably just about any configuration on your operating system through yep. Copilot. Okay. But because it is part of your operating system, it stays persistent, it's opened, and it can help you solve problems in other apps, even though it's not necessarily interacting with those other apps. It's interacting with Windows, but it can give you the answers. And you still get ChatGPT4 and Dolly 3 generation for text and images without having to switch Windows. Correct. And that's the, again, you're, you're in here, you're doing all this stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this it, is this is this is yet another productivity hack. Yeah, this is what this absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, when it was when it had disappeared for a couple of weeks, and I hadn't used it much remotely again because it's a little bit of a different, it's a tighter view on the screen when you're on a when you're on a laptop. Right. Right. But the, for the two weeks or so that it was was gone, it definitely hurt me from a productivity standpoint because there's always some little thing in Excel or yeah. PowerPoint that I'm trying to figure out. And yeah. I can't figure it out. And Santi and I are a bit more power users, right? Maybe than most users of these apps, but it probably even applies more for non-power users because the times they're in there and using it, they they don't know anything. You know, yeah. they're they're a casual user of the application. So this becomes even more valuable as a support tool. Yeah. Yeah, listen, I think it's awesome. Uh, I'm really hope that they figure out the uh, the whole fix so that everybody gets it. Yeah, I'll be a, I'll be a big user. I'll be I'll be a definitely a big user of uh, the Windows 11 uh, Copilot. So when it ever starts working, for you. <laughs> whenever it starts working for me, yeah. So anyway, folks, this brings this episode of Tech Unmuted to an end. This is a good time to remind you all to subscribe to Tech Unmuted on your favorite podcast platform, uh, including uh, YouTube, if you like the visual, right? Uh, but until next time, folks, remember this, stay curious, stay connected. Visit fusionconnect.com slash tech unmuted for show notes and more episodes. Thanks for listening.